Benjamin Franklin once said, the best of all medicine is resting and fasting. And in this episode, we'll find out if he might have been right. Today we're going to be investigating intermittent fasting. We'll be finding out what the different types of intermittent fasting are, a little bit about the science behind it, what the key benefits to intermittent fasting are, and finally what I recommend you could try at home. Right, intermittent fasting. It's really an umbrella term and there's different types of intermittent fasting. Um, one you might have heard of is the 5-2 diet, made famous by Dr. Michael Mosley, where for two non-consecutive days of the week you eat less than 500 calories and then the other five days of the week you can eat what you like. Then there is also alternate day fasting, you feast one day, you fast the next, you feast and then you fast, etc. And there's time-restricted feeding, where you fast for certain hours of the day. One of the most famous examples is known as the 16-8 diet. So I'll explain a little bit about the science behind fasting and why it works. Really, it gives the body an opportunity to use stored fat and energy sources. Hang on a minute, let me draw you a picture. Okay, really quickly, when we eat, we have increased levels of insulin and excess energy stored as glycogen within the liver and muscles. And when that's full, we start to store it as fat. When we fast, we have decreased levels of insulin and that glycogen is broken down into glucose and uses energy and then we start burning fat as free fatty acids and we start generating ketones. All clear? So what are the benefits of intermittent fasting? Well, there are lots and lots and lots of suggested benefits. A lot of it still needs to have some more studies and evidence, but it's all looking very exciting. There are benefits that include weight loss, increasing your metabolic rate, decreased blood pressure, decreased cholesterol, triglycerides, decreased fatty liver, decreased blood sugar, decreasing your risk of type 2 diabetes. So these are huge promises that if really true could have significant impact on this epidemic of obesity and cardiometabolic disease. Another massive benefit to intermittent fasting is something called autophagy. And in 2016, Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize for Medicine for his research into this. Now, if you imagine you've not washed up for days and your washing up bowl is overfilled and dirty and horrible, and every day you just pile new stuff onto it and you're never doing the washing up. Well, autophagy is the clearing out of all the rubbish and debris and dead cell membranes and dead proteins from your cells to make way for new clean ones. So if you never get a chance to do this autophagy, it's a bit like never doing your washing up and it's all just piling up. So the cells need to have that time for autophagy in order to heal and repair. So for example, if you eat really late at night, your body's busy digesting and hasn't got time for the cellular repair that needs to go on. We know that overnight, one tenth of the cells within your stomach lining are repaired and replaced. And so without this fasting phase, there is no time for this autophagy. And without this autophagy, we know that this could be a leading cause of problems such as Alzheimer's, cancer, inflammatory conditions, etc. It's also believed that intermittent fasting can help with brain health. It can help with the growth of new neurons and it can also prevent age-related cognitive decline. So there's lots of research going on into how it can help with neurological disorders such as epilepsy, stroke and Alzheimer's. So how can intermittent fasting help prevent cancer? Well, some studies show it can delay the progression of tumors and also be an adjunct to chemotherapy treatments, which means it can be used alongside chemotherapy to help chemotherapy work even better. Some studies have also shown that there can be some reduction of risk of skin cancer and skin aging, and also breast cancer, specifically with time-restricted feeding. What is this about living longer if you fast? Well, the only evidence so far is within rats, so there's no human studies, however, it does make sense because of all the benefits we've talked about that if you were receiving these benefits you would indeed live longer especially i think the autophagy and the benefits associated with that so theoretically if you start intermittent fasting you can lose weight reduce your risk of cardiometabolic disease improve your brain health improve your cellular repair reduce your risk of cancer and live longer and all you have to do is not eat for certain times. So essentially you have to just do nothing for a while. I mean, that sounds like it's worth giving a try if you ask me. 
I'm going to talk to you now about time-restricted feeding and this I think is the most interesting of all the intermittent fasting options because it is linked to the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is a 24-hour cycle linked to behaviour and metabolism and processes within the body and almost every cell within the body has got a circadian rhythm and we know that disruption of this can cause serious problems. If you try and remember back to when we were hunter-gatherers, we obviously woke up when the sun came up, we would go out to forage for some food, we would hunt and eat during the day, and when the sun went down, we would come back and sleep. And in modern 21st century, that's gone out the window, we can eat whenever we want, we have lights, and we can stay up as late as we like, and this some researchers think could be part of the reason that we have this massive rise in chronic diseases. A really interesting study on mice shows that when mice were fed a high fat diet, typical of a Western diet now, but were either allowed to eat whenever they wanted or were restricted by time between 8 and 12 hours, the mice who had a time restricted diet, who ate exactly the same as the other mice, were protected from diet related obesity, they had reduced metabolic disease, they had improved agility, cognition and endurance. They ran on that little wheel for longer than the ones who could eat whenever they wanted. I mean those results are only in mice but they're pretty amazing results considering they were fed a high fat diet as well. Right, the nitty gritty. What do I recommend for you guys? Well, I think the main problem with society at the moment is we never give our bodies an opportunity to flip the metabolic switch. And by that I mean we're always eating and our bodies are always storing glycogen and they're storing fat. Instead, if we had an opportunity to fast, then we could be burning fat and creating ketones just by doing nothing at all. And so for me, the best option is the restricted time feeding. And this is because we are also working in line with our circadian rhythm. And we know that in itself has additional benefits. And it seems to make sense from an evolutionary point of view, hunter-gatherers, it's what we're meant to do as humans. So, if you just start by doing a 12 hour overnight fast. So if the last mouthful of food you eat is 8pm, then don't eat any breakfast until 8am. But I'll tell you, I've been doing this for quite a few weeks and I've really got used to it, found it quite easy. And if you slip up one night or two, then don't worry about it and just try and keep going. And like me, you may find that you end up feeling much happier and healthier. Bye!